Hello and welcome once again to another episode of Open Talk. In today's episode, our guest is Farid Vedder, the Chairman and Managing Director of the Better Group of Companies. He is a businessman that has helped the young entrepreneurs startups to grow up their businesses in Bahrain and we will talk about his achievements in supporting the young entrepreneurs. Welcome to our show. Thank you very much. Um, uh, so Farid, to start with, can you tell me who is Farid Better? All right. First of all, I'd like to thank you for inviting me for this uh, interview or talk, hard talk, mm -hmm. <laughs> if, you if you will. And I would like to say something about this place. It's beautiful places, very col colorful, and you have this goldfish here. Thank you. Now, who is Farid Badr? Uh, Farid Badr, if, if I can summarize it in a, if you, uh, one sentence, I have made 25 people in 25 countries mm -hmm. in 25 years. Not happy. Fun. Okay. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's nice. big. And they, they are, they're happy. <laughs> they're happy. I'll explain to you okay. as we talk. Now, let, let me start from uh, young, when I was young, mm -hmm. uh, because it's very important for the young entrepreneurs to understand that nothing is impossible. Everything it can happen. So I loved playing guitar. Okay. And but I could not afford it. I was uh, 17 years old, mm -hmm. as you know. I was a student, and I did not have money. And uh, my father said to me, "You must study. You should not be uh, playing guitar. You know, wasting your time. Education will bring you bre bread and butter." Mm -hmm. uh, so my classmate, okay. who had a guitar. So I used to go to him, and because he was weak in mathematics, I was good at mathematics. Okay. <laughs> I used to teach him mathematics, and I used to and take turn used to yes, take his guitar. Yeah, okay. I would uh, take his guitar and play guitar, and um, that way I would uh, enjoy my uh, yeah my uh, passion in a way, if you like. Mm -hmm. uh, then I needed guitar badly, so during the summer. Mm -hmm. I worked for two months in a factory. Okay. It was an uh, aluminum factory, so we worked there, and my salary was 50 dinar. Okay. So being a factory worker, and today factory owner. Amazing. <laughs> with, that's with 200 employees. So that's uh, a, a lesson for young entrepreneurs to understand that nothing is impossible if there is a will there's a way. Of course. Mm. And that's why I have uh, a formula made, articulated a formula mm -hmm. for success. Okay. It's all about my experience. I want to share with you, sure. if you like. Of course, we would yes. love to. And I call it the five P. Okay. The first P is passion. Okay. Find your passion. Why do I say this? Because passion is everything. Mm -hmm. Passion in French means pain, good pain. The pain which you are having, but then again, it makes you grow, makes, makes you, you grow stronger. after yeah. things you love. Mm -hmm. uh, so my passion changed during as I grew older. Grew older. Yeah. Yeah. So it was music uh, initially, th then I went after it and I got it. Then when I went to London, uh, for my higher education, I, from I went to university. Mm -hmm. My passion became uh, martial art. Okay. And martial art was my everything. It's like an oxygen for me, okay. <laughs> day <laughs> and night. <laughs> I used to go and I won a lot of trophies. Nice. And I was black belt and uh, uh, won a lot of uh, competitions. And I learned something there. So. With the guitar, mm -hmm. I learned to be persistent. Okay. And persistence, thank to my father who taught me, nothing comes easy. easy. You need to work hard for it. And if you have a passion, you will go after it. Of course. That's why I keep saying to young entrepreneurs, find your passion and go after it. Mm -hmm. The second one is called persistence. Mm -hmm. Persistence is that you, you will not give up. You will always persevere your passion 
and that's important. Uh, the third one is practice, practice, practice. I learned this from my teacher of Kung Fu. Okay. He used to tell me, Farid, practice one kick thousands of times okay. until you become expert, you mm -hmm. become master in this kick, then try another kick. Okay. So I learned this, and this is why I keep telling, I learn myself, I do this exercise myself and I teach others also, you have to be, uh, to practice, practice, practice until you become uh, an excel expert. expert or excellent into what you do, whatever you do, of being course. it art, being it business, being it uh, um, a musician, whatever. And uh, all these uh, masters, if you see, if you like, they are masters because they practiced. Of they course. practiced this and became excellent. Now, I'll tell you a story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Picasso was in the street of Italy okay. and he was walking. An uh, uh, old lady said, Mr. Picasso, can you draw something for me on a piece of paper? Mm -hmm. So he took the paper and he drew something very quickly. It took him three seconds. Okay. And she took the paper and said, wow, very amazing. And she walked away. Picasso told him, please wait. Come here, madame. Okay. One million dollar. He said, what? It took you three seconds to do this. Mm -hmm. One million dollar. He said, yes, lady. It took me 10 years to be okay. able to draw it in three seconds. Wow, amazing. That's a very important lesson. So I came back after that. Mm -hmm. I worked with my father for uh, one year. Then I decided that I need to do something myself. Okay. I need to be my own uh, master. Mm -hmm. I need to innovate, employ people, work with people, try to create something. So <coughs> I started a company which is uh, doing waterproofing works. Okay. So what we do, we put, I was everything. I was the salesman, accountant, secretary, you name it. I was <laughs> everything. Okay. I used to go to people's house. Nice. Would you believe it? Take the measurement of the roof, come to the office, type the quotation, and then call the client, negotiate, make an agreement, and then finalize the job, and then ask the supervisor to execute the work. Mm -hmm. I used to be the purchasing manager, order materials, and then make an invoice. So you gave us your whole dedication the whole from dedication. scratch. I learned everything from scratch. Mm -hmm. And this is another lesson. Entrepreneurs should learn everything so that nobody can fool around with them. Exactly, yes. yes. So we said uh, passion, mm -hmm. persistence, and practice. Pa practice, practice, practice. And fourth one, patient. Okay. So patient, I learned this one from my wife. Okay. My wife is everything to me. She is the supporter. She is my mentor. She's, she helps me during hard times. Mm -hmm. She gives me the energy. And patient is very important because you need it in business. You fail, but then again, and then you fail. You fail and fail. Ne somebody needs to be there with you. Of course. To push you, to support you. Exactly. You see, I was at some time at the top of the mountain. Mm -hmm. Then I fell down. Mm -hmm. I, I almost lost everything. Okay. But those people who are your mentors, like your mother, your wife, your father. These are my mentors who stood with me, they who lifted me they up. They had your back. Yeah, they lifted me up and mm -hmm. supported me. Without them, I would have not achieved those things. So, then we say patient. Then the fifth one mm -hmm. is very, very important. Okay. <laughs> I would like to know what's the that. The most important thing. So. When you are successful mm -hmm. and God give you everything in life, mm -hmm. you need to pay forward. You need yes. to pay back. You need to help others to succeed. Of course. And that is very important. Paying it forward. Paying yes. it forward. And this is, this is where I am now. This is my stage now, helping others. Now I do it in different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, I do it in business and in uh, community work. Mm -hmm. 
So I was a Toastmasters, so I became a president of uh, FNC Toast Toastmasters. And uh, Toastmasters is the uh, organization, international organization, mm -hmm. who helps, helps people to become better communicator. You see, communication is the most important of thing. Course. It it's brings people together where we can have a dialogue, mm -hmm. understand each other, and try to uh, come trust. Of course, trust communication skills other. is, the, is yeah, one of the most, most important, important skills. Important things. Yes. And some of the startups, uh, they lack this. M perhaps they are good in what they do. Mm -hmm. When they come to present themselves, they lack that uh, uh, confidence and the communication skill. skills. Yeah. And then they might fail or the investor will not invest in them because mm -hmm. they are not presenting their pitch well. Mm -hmm. So uh, in another way, I'm also part of an uh, uh, organization, charity organization, where we help uh, unfortunate pe people. Mm -hmm. So we have in Bahrain, for instance, challenging things. Mm -hmm. We have uh, uh, children with behavior difficulties. Mm -hmm. Uh, we need to look after them. We need to help them. Uh, we need, we, we, uh, there are uh, children with cancer. So we bought a machine throughout the organization and uh, a very, uh, uh, the community are very helpful. Mm -hmm. So I, I tr raised money. We bought a uh, uh, machine, which is in Salmani Hospital. It's that's a great, this is a great initiative. Yes, yes. Yeah. And also the, the sickle cell anemia is another mm -hmm. issue. We yes, need yes. to help those people mm -hmm. also. Um, uh, this is uh, another thing we do. All right. So what do we do as a company? So by the company of a uh, group of company, started with uh, small contracting. Okay. And then after five years, something happened was turning point for us. Okay. The lesson here when there is a problem, turn it into opportunity. Mm -hmm. Embrace the problem, embrace the challenge, and turn it into opportunity. So uh, the supplier of product, which we used to bring from UK, okay. uh, told us that from next month, the mm -hmm. price is going to shoot up by 15%, okay. which we made us upset. And we told them that this is not n good to do that mm -hmm. because we have commitment. We have given quotations, and then we need to stick that. Would you delay it for three months? Which they refused. Mm -hmm. And so I made a challenge. I told them, one year, one day, I'm going to this, I'm going to make a factory producing the same product in Bahrain. Okay. It was a big... <laughs> it's a big challenge, <laughs> a yeah. A big challenge, but the determination of a person and the fire inside, I call it the fire, yeah. that drive you towards that mm -hmm. uh, passion. So I went around all over the world. In those days, we didn't have internet, by the way. Okay. The young people are very, very lucky these mm -hmm. days. They have internet, they have all these banks uh, who support them. Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't have all this. There are so many things in Bahrain. We have Temkin, we have BDB, we have, you know, uh, angel investments. You know, I'm really happy what's going on in Bahrain. It's it has really progressed a lot. Yeah. Progress a lot. Every day you see some activities, right? Exactly. The young people are very, very lucky, to be honest. And uh, the, the, the government is doing a lot uh, about this. I mean, EDB doing great job. They are, indeed. They are. Indeed. So I went search all over the world and f finally I found a partner who can bring me the technology. So I lack the technology. I brought the technology. What was missing? The finance. Okay. The finance. What, I, what would I do now? I need one million dollar to buy the machinery plus the technology to uh, establish this. I had the land and the facility but l I lacked the machinery and technology. Mm -hmm. So with a partner we, we, who comes here, so I need money. I went to BDB. Okay. BDB was there, they wanted a feasibility study. Uh, 
I, I gave them my feasibility study, and they, they, they did their own due diligence. Mm -hmm. But the CEO of BDB asked me three questions. And what were they? This is very important to listen to this. Okay. He said, I'll ask you three questions. If you answer, I'll give you the money. Okay. First, why are you doing this? Okay. Because always you have to have answer of why. Mm -hmm. I told him there's a fire here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this fire is my passion. I mean, I want to manufacture the waterproofing. He said, tick. Okay. You got it. Oh. Where, where is the, your market? Okay. I told him I am the market. <laughs> okay. Nice. <laughs> because I'm in this m business, mm -hmm. so I can uh, offtake half of the production because I'm doing You're this. You're in the field. Yeah, I'm yeah. in the field. Yeah. The other half, he said, what do you do with the other half? I said, <coughs> I will sell it to the market. Okay. The third, he said, tick. The third one, where do you want to be in 10 years' time? Okay. So I said, the whole world I want to be. I want to export to the whole world. Nice. By the way, today we export to 25 countries. Wow. One of them is Vietnam. Nice. Vietnam. <laughs> so from it. a company in Bahrain? Yes. So we are proud of this, that Bahraini products reached Vietnam. Nice. So that's, I'm proud of this. Even I'm telling you this one because it's important. Mm -hmm. Italian companies came to me and told me, manufacture for us, put made in Italy and export. I said, this is impossible. I'm proud of my country. Mm -hmm. What I'm doing is for my country and I can't it change serves it. serves my country, yes. yes. I, I, I cannot do that, will you like it or not? Mm -hmm. So, uh, we took, the, I mean, he, it was approved. Uh, they gave us the money, but there was a condition. They okay. said, we need stake into the, your company. We need a percentage. Okay. So, give and take, we agreed to that to give them 10%. Okay. And that was a good move, you know. We were there together with BDB and imagine I returned my money with interest and I was giving them dividend and then after 10 years uh, I bought back my 10% nice. they exited with good profit uh, I think I got they got five times their investment wow. and uh, they admit every time they see me you were the best company we invested <laughs> in. <laughs> Some of the nice. companies <laughs> do not return the money even they are defaulting. So, so we started the factory. It wasn't easy, mm -hmm. to be honest. So we had a lot of challenges. Of course, it's so a factory. Yeah, it took yeah. us three years to be able to produce something. The other challenges we face, now we have a product but the market does not accept it. Okay, <laughs> yeah, that, that could so be very challenging. we have the culture in Bahrain which has to be ch to change. Mm -hmm. Bahrainis do not support the local product. They think local product is, uh, is not to the standard. Mm -hmm. They rather prefer other imported products from Italy or England or Germany or... The no, we have local products, we have good products. It took me a while to convince them now, I'll tell you, this is also a good story, how d I did this. So, I sold it to shops in Bahrain, which they have this do-it-yourself, you know, shops who sell everything, yeah. the building material. Yeah. And I was not, a people were not buying it. So, I was asking the salesman, why people are not buying my product? He said, mm -hmm. you are new and this is local product. People prefer imported from UK or even Emirates is better than Bahrain. I said, no, this is not true. We mm -hmm. need to change that. Uh, I told them, then I gave them the incentives. They said, if you, if you sell 10, I'll give you two free. Mm -hmm. So there was an incentive for him to, to, to be able, to, be to, able yeah. to sell it. But there was another issue. There were two kind of customers. A customer who will be influenced by the salesman, mm -hmm. That is okay, he can influence the salesman. He will ask the salesman, which one is better? So if you tell him this yes. one, yeah. he will buy this. But the other customer who have been brainwashed on certain product, mm -hmm. they know this, this is product, what they want, I yeah. buy this, yeah. I, I will not change. Mm -hmm. So they would take this, the product and move on. I could not change their mindset mm -hmm. until something happened. 
Or what was that? That is the question. I was shopping in the supermarket. Okay. You know, buying grocery and things. I like to eat in the morning is Weetabix. Okay. Yeah, Weetabix, you know yeah, that. Yeah. I like to buy that. So I took Weetabix and went home. In the morning, I was searching for my Weetabix. It's not there. Okay. I told my wife, where's my Weetabix? I bought yesterday. He said, you didn't buy Weetabix. Okay. <laughs> I said, what did I buy? So she showed me the box. Okay. It was not Weetabix. Okay. <laughs> it looked like Weetabix. But it wasn't. But it was Weetabiscuit. <laughs> okay. It was another brand. So as you can see, the image is more powerful than the word. Mm -hmm. So once we change the drum, I called the uh, factory immediately, change the drums to make it to the to make uh, it green. green. Okay. And that was amazing. The sales went up and we managed to sell uh, the product uh, effectively. Uh, now, what, uh, what is our next or what we have done so far? Mm -hmm. So we have now created and angel investment. Mm -hmm. Angel investment are different from other investments. They take the risk. Mm -hmm. They invest into startups mm -hmm. because the most important thing, element, is, uh, is the risk factor. Mm -hmm. Not many people would like to invest into startups because it's very risky. You give them the money, they, they exhaust not. the money, yeah. they fail. And we discovered after long research, after investing into two startups in Bahrain, mm -hmm. you give them the money and they fail, the money is gone. Okay. Would you put more money in startups? Mm -hmm. And I've talked to many startups. This is where they lack. Uh, many banks do not give them money for the second round. Mm -hmm. And where this is where we have the, the gap in the market. So we come in here and help them, inshallah, try to scale scale their businesses mm -hmm. so with this they need mentorship of course yeah. so more important than the money is the mentorship, mentorship yeah. try to manage the funds try to help them get legal advice and other help they need mm -hmm. we have also invested outside bahrain okay. into startups because we thought the startups in bahrain need to mature and grow mm -hmm. and learn and they lack little bit of technology behind the, their businesses. So we invested into five startups outside in Silicon Valley. Okay. We are going to bring them to Bahrain. Mm -hmm. We're talking now to, to uh, Bahrain Fintech Bay mm -hmm. to bring some of these inv investors into the f uh, Fintech Bay. So that will be really good for the ecosystem. So they come here, and meet. They, we engage them with the startups in Bahrain, exactly. they will learn and hopefully we will help the ecosystem okay. of the startups and entrepreneurship. Well, that, that would be great. That would be great to have uh, that in Bahrain. Thank you. So could, could you, would you like to say any last words to the, all the young entrepreneurs yes. or the youth out there? The youth, don't be afraid of failure. Mm -hmm. Fail forward. You always have challenges. We, we, we fall down, get up and go forward. Try to have mentors mm -hmm. always with you to help you to lift up and I'm ready to be there for you. Well, I'm sure they would love to, they would love to have you with them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the show. Once again, we had our guest today was Farid Bedr, the Chairman and Managing Director of the Bedr Group of Companies.